Welcome back to Deathly Not Definitive. I'm Ken. And I'm Bethany. And we're just a couple of kooky, crazy kids in love. They love doing some death battle reactions. Yes, we do. And so this is uh, death battle. Um, we're gonna mess up their names. Uh, Gaara versus uh, Toph. Naruto versus Avatar. Um, so yeah, later today uh, on Definitely Not Definitive Games, we're gonna check out some uh, Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm uh, boss endings and uh, battles and whatnot. So if you want all of our death battle reactions, check out the description of this video. We got a playlist there for you. Bethany's gonna explain real quickly how to do death battle on this channel because it's a little bit different. Yeah, so we love to place bets on who we think the winner is going to be. So what we have at our disposal is money. Monopoly money. Specifically Monopoly money. But what we do is we place a bet on who we think the winner is going to be with a specific dollar amount. And then whichever one of us has the most money at Thanksgiving gets to choose our cosplay outfits for New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. Mm -hmm. So the way that we watch it is first we watch the first half of the video. They talk about their special skills, traits, armors, advantages, disadvantages. Then we place our bets. Then we watch the second half to see which one of us has the most money to walk away with. Throughout Death Battle, we've seen all manner of weapons and abilities. We have Gorg guy. Combatants command Peanut the guy. very earth around them. Gotta of the desert. Gotta. And Toth Bay Fong, the blind band. He's whiz and I'm boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. <laughs> Gara of the Desert is a short, skinny, pale stick of a kid, but he's also one of the deadliest shinobi in the world. Ooh. He looks like a member of Green Day. Gara <laughs> is the son of the fourth Kazikage, leader of the village hidden in the sand. Born prematurely at the cost of his mother's life, mm. Gara was destined for a childhood of depression and loneliness from the get-go. Yeah. Not even a minute old and already has a kill under his belt. Oh. Oh, technically he had a little help. Because, you see... As he was being born, his father was like, Hey, you know what would be awesome? Using ninja magic to seal a horrible monster in my son's belly to turn him into an ultimate weapon. <laughs> Dad of the year. <laughs> the process was successful and Gata became a Jinchuriki, human beings who have powerful tailed beasts trapped within them. Ooh. Gata's beast was Shukaku, a giant tanuki with power over sand. Oh, I want a tanuki as a pet. They're so fluffy and adorable. You just want to hug. Holy shit, what <laughs> is that? Shukaku loathed humanity, and at first, Gata had difficulty controlling the monster's rage, accidentally hurting others. As such, he was shunned by his own people, forced to live a secluded life. Well, yeah, I mean, he's got a goddamn tummy monster. It's not like Pepto-Bismol solving that. Convinced his only option was to fight and care for only himself, Gata became a ruthless killing machine. But it's not all bad. Having a digestive desert demon gives him control over all things sand. He can wield it as a weapon, using his mind to trap and crush his foes. Oh, and he can also use it to freaking fly. How the hell does that work? <laughs> he can mentally adjust the density of his sand, whether it needs to be lighter than air or stronger than steel. Ooh. He can even use it to stop bombs powerful enough to wipe out an entire village. He can control any sand in his vicinity using his chakra, a spiritual energy shinobi access for superhuman abilities, hmm. such as walking up a tree. This guy is like the nice. ultimate emo kid, but <laughs> I'm not gonna give him too much crap because he can use existing sand to crush the ground around him for even more sand. So oh. he's never without easy access to ammo. Despite this, he still carries a gigantic gourd of sand on his back. It's huge. You'd think that'd be hard on his spine. Interestingly enough, its unique shape and size is a reference to how in Japanese folklore, tanukis were considered to be so well endowed they'd have to sling their testicles over their shoulders. <laughs> awesome. Oh my god. The is, Gata's gourd is not carrying any ordinary testicles. I mean sand. Gata has infused his own chakra into the Who gourd gigantic sand. testicles? This directly links it to Gata, making it much easier for him to control. He's so skilled with it, he can even forge weapons from it, bury people underground, or hmm. send it into another person's bloodstream and control them like some sort of puppet. Oh, oh wow. You itch, you're not gonna scratch. Also, Gata oh. eventually battled and defeated his own father, who happened to be a zombie at the time. His father used a magnetic release ability to control gold dust, much like Gata does sand. 
Even though he can't do the zombie dad magnet thing, gotta added gold dust to his gourd sand anyway, giving him more control over its weight. But wait, there's more. <laughs> With her dying breath, Gara's mother somehow imparted her own power into this sand. It became living sand, an extension of her will, determined to follow and protect Gara. It will spring from the gourd to defend him from any danger, regardless of risk and without command. This absolute defensive technique wow. is called the absolute defense. Pretty good name, really. <laughs> Gara sand is so dense and fast, only someone who can move nearly the speed of sound can pass it. Gala can also use everyday sand to create defenses such as his sand armor, which encases him in a shell to soften blows. Unlike his automatic absolute defense, the sand armor is self-created and requires a large amount of his chakra to maintain. Gala's skill with sand is only limited by how much chakra he's got left in his system. After running low, he could tag out and give Shukaku a turn fighting. Yeah. Until a group of crazy people literally pulled the sand monster from his body for good. That must have hurt. What? It's got to be like twice as bad as the night after Chipotle. He oh. died. Oh, the same then. Turns out losing Shukaku was actually a blessing in disguise. After being resurrected, Gara spent some time reevaluating his emotional roller coaster of a life. Inspired by Naruto Uzumaki, he began to truly understand compassion. His attitude changed. His people began supporting him. He even commanded the Allied Shinobi forces during the Fourth Great Shinobi War. And, like his late father, Gata also became... A zombie? Kazekage. Damn! Well, even non-zombie and missing Shukaku, Gata still retained his powerful chakra and skill over sand. In their fight, sand Gata is was faster so than powerful, the I can see. his father mistook him for <laughs> Shukaku itself, despite the sand Colors monster being long here. gone. Gata is stronger and smarter than ever, all thanks to his mother's love. I miss Mama Boom's dick. Few can withstand the overwhelming power of this sand shinobi. Or Mama Boomstick's cooking. Hey! You're uninvited to Thanksgiving. I never was. Exactly. Okay. As the only child of the wealthy Beifong family, Toph was kept a secret from the rest of the world. Hidden away, she was pampered and guarded like a fragile child. Her parents were hopeful she could someday become a noble, respected member of Earth Kingdom society. But their hopes were pretty much dashed from the moment she popped out. See those faded whites? Yeah, Toph's completely blind. My daughter is blind. She is blind and tiny and helpless and fragile. Still, fragile is the last word that I would want to use to describe this chick. Frustrated by her parents' stubborn coddling, Toph ran away from home at the age of six and ended up losing her way in a cave. Until she was rescued by some giant badger moles. Yes, <laughs> they are badgers. And they are moles. <laughs> Imagine one of those things burrowing into your home. What kind of pest control do you even call for that? Oh wait, I know. Fire. Like Toph, <laughs> badger moles are blind, so they took a liking to her. Well, the hell would they know? And as the original artists of the craft, the badger moles began her training in the art of earthbending. These giant varmints taught Toph how to manipulate rug and stone. Using movements similar to the Chu Gar praying mantis martial art, Toph can telekinetically throw, grow, shrink, and alter Earth in any conceivable way, making for some pretty down to earth attacks and defenses. The Badger Moles also taught Toph how to see. Wait! These ridiculous creatures are also masters of LASIK surgery? <clears throat> no, Toph does not use her eyes to see. Of course, her other senses are extremely accurate, and as a master earthbender, Toph can sense the location of Earth anywhere. Even more impressive, though, the Badger Moles navigate their tunnels using an earthbending technique known as the Seismic Sense, and Toph quickly picked up on this talent. It's kind of like sonar, detecting the exact location and movement of a person or object through their interaction with the ground. Cool. I feel the vibrations in the Earth, and I can see where everything is. You, that tree, even those ants. She feels every movement, every footstep, every heartbeat. So precisely, she can even tell if a person's lying. A woman who can always tell when I'm lying? No, thank you. <laughs> Dov is so good at this that even her closest friends sometimes forget she's blind. <laughs> now, 
Sorry. But don't worry, <laughs> they're reminded. In only six years, Tuff had completely mastered earthbending. She even won the Earth Rumble 4 tournament multiple times under her stage name, The Blind Bandit. But Toph didn't stop her training with just earthbending. At first, softer earth proved difficult for her seismic sense. I feel the vibrations in the ground with my feet, but the sand is so loose and shifty, it makes everything look fuzzy. But she has since demonstrated her mastery in both sand bending and mud bending. She can also change the density of earth from sand to stone and back. And before you start making any density or hardening innuendos, she's 12. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> but her greatest achievement is the discovery of an all-new bending art, one thought to be impossible, metal bending. By manipulating the earthy composition within, Toph can bend nearly any type of metal just as well as stone. Oh. The exception being highly purified metals such as platinum. Toph quickly mastered metal bending and went on to teach it to Oh, others. sweet! She eventually wow. even founded and led a metal bending police force. And that's after conquering Earth Rumble 4, holding up a building the size of a castle, defeating an entire army almost single handedly, and dueling King Boomy to a standstill. King Boomy. And that guy's conquered an entire hostile city by himself. Even in her old age, Toph was capable of going one on one with a new avatar, and her seismic sense could locate people across the world. She knows when I've lied and where I've been? Women should not have these powers. <laughs> Okay, this is a tough one. Um, I'm only going five on this one because I have no idea who's going to win. Uh, this is just, I'm going with Gara, And I don't know, I, I don't know why. I don't know why I, 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 I'm, I'm going with him. Just because uh, it's a sadder story, you know, and he's got, he's got his mom protecting him. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go with that. I'm going to hope that his mom protects him and that he, he ends up winning. So five bucks on him. I'm going to go five. I'm going the opposite direction. Okay. I'm putting it on top. Uh, right. And for one reason and one reason only. Sand bending. Hmm. His entire power source is sand, and she can sand bend. So it's true. That's, that's what true. I'm going for. That's uh that's legitimate. All right. Here we go. All right, the combatants are set. Let's end this debate once and for all. It's time for a death battle! Right. You do not belong here. This is sacred ground. Me. Oh yeah, tough guy. Make me. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. Nice. Interesting. She commands stone as fluently as I control sand. By the way, I can tell you're using your sand to smash up the ground and underneath us for more ammo. Pretty smart for a sand bag. Too bad I'm gonna kick your butt before you can use any of it. <laughs> I can't underestimate you. Yeah. Grumpy, I'm not ready to be a shish kebab just yet. Oh, oh, huh. still didn't break it. Come on, are you really that scared of a little blind girl? <laughs> I'm touched. Who knocked him out of there? Your eyes. Those are not the eyes of loneliness, like mine. They are... blank. Impressive insight, Gloomsville. I'm digging the whole wearing sand thing, though. That's new. Whoa! Hey, no fair! 
No crusher. You need your arms to control the earth. I will remove them. Oh, damn. Oh. Ooh, or not. Dream on, creep. It'll take a lot more sand than that to take me down. That's the plan. <laughs> Sun burial. It is done. No, it's not. Jeez, I almost felt that. <laughs> That's impossible. Are you kidding? Pay attention, Sandy. I'm about to school you. Uh oh, not looking good. Gotcha. Oh, that's how it's done. Damn. Why did another anime character have to lose? Yeah, but here's why. Gata's sand is monstrous, and its speed and power could easily obliterate most foes. But with Toph, it's another story. Really? She's freaking blind for God's sakes, and he can fly! <laughs> oh ho ho! In the official behind the scenes extras of the Avatar Book 2 DVD, we found this. Toph can feel the earth, even if it isn't connected to the ground. Toph is tough, but her real strength lies in her precision and technique. With her earth bending and seismic sense, she could see Gata's attacks coming the instant they began, regardless of if he was in the air. While ah. Gata's chakra infused sand is controlled by his late mother, it's still sand. Just like in an earth bending duel, Toph was able to influence it long enough to misdirect or block attacks. Also remember, Gata added his father's gold dust to the mix, giving Toph two different bending options just in case. Unlike platinum, gold contains traces of iron and copper, and can be metal bent. To top this off, Gata keeps himself covered in his sand armor, so Toph could always sense where he was. And it's specifically stated that the sand armor uses up large amounts of Gata's own chakra, not his mother's sand. So when he ran low on chakra, it became difficult to maintain. Thus, Toph had no problem turning Gata's greatest defense into his worst weakness. Mm. Gata couldn't sand up to Duff. <laughs> I know you're floored. I really ground that one in, didn't I? <laughs> oh, what can I say? It's my earthly delight. <laughs> the winner is Toph Bay Fong. No need to gravel about it. Can't we just bury the hatchet? <laughs> I'm out. All right, that makes sense. I think what you uh, what you picked up on was pretty much uh, what they had said one of the reasons was, but like, we didn't know that she could also sense it in the air, but I didn't really yeah. factor that in as to a uh, reason that uh, Gara was gonna win. You uh, add to your lead and you are now at 315 and I'm Boom. at 285. Boom. Boom. Uh, what'd you think about the match? I thought it was good. I think they um, they did a good job exploring some, some various attacks and parries between mm -hmm. the two. Um, the animation style was was on point, I think, and I enjoyed the smack talk. Yeah, the smack talk was fun. Um, that was cool. Uh, like, as soon as I started hearing her smack talk, I was like, oh, I should have built bet on Toph. Uh, she's, she's fun. Yeah, she is. Um, but yeah, so let us know what you thought about this down below in the comments. And if you want all of our death battle reactions, check out the description of this video because we got a playlist there for you. Yep. As well as a link to our Patreon and get early ad free access to our reactions. Yeah. Thanks so much for checking out our reaction for this death battle, Garo versus Toph, but just keep in mind. That our reaction is definitely not definitive.